Now, more of Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute, the only show directly addressing the problems and solutions for Illinois. Now, from AM560, here's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with John Tillman, president and CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute. And uh, John, this is a rather odd story because it was a rather odd deal that... uh, Odd? Stupid? Stupid? Palatine Consolidated Community School District 15 reached a agreement with the uh, teachers union there. Uh, and so that's not unusual. The length of the agreement, 10 years, a 10 year deal, 10 year contract with teachers that would stretch to 2026 with, according to the Tribune, raises per year between two and a half and four percent. Um, why would you enter into a decade long agreement with a teacher's union? I mean, who much less a school board can project out what the fiscal realities will be of a local school district, what the overall economic climate will be a decade out. Economists certainly can't. It's one of the stupidest contracts. Let's be blunt ever signed by a school district in the history of the state. 10 years at a time when we have complete fiscal uncertainty at the state level and at the local level. At a time when Illinois now ranks number one in property taxes. And the number one driver of rising property taxes are teachers' contracts like this. And what they've locked in is a spending level for a school district for 10 years. They have no idea what the population is going to be of the state, let alone that school district. It is irresponsibility at the highest order. And everybody in Palatine should take a look at who the school board is. I mean, it kind of underscores the need to pay more attention to who's on your local school board and what the heck they're doing. Since, as you suggest, that's 80 in Palatine, probably closer to 85, 90 percent of your property tax bill. Uh, And for more on this, we're now joined by Tim Millar. He's the former school board president, former, former, not party to this. Yeah, right. For uh, District 15, he's now a, a village of Palatine Councilman Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. And Tim, why did you leave? Gosh, look what happened. <laughs> you know, it wasn't uh, wasn't my uh, my favorite uh, thing to do. I guess no. It, <laughs> I always had uh, more of a municipal uh, background. So, well, what what is your view on uh, this ten uh, year deal that was struck? You know, I think it uh, is really insane. Um, it it really locks in. The community, uh, former boards, I mean, future boards, as well as future administration, um, you're really stuck uh, for quite a long time. And uh, the only thing you can do is basically reduce staff if you get into trouble. And and what was the rationale behind those? I mean, I understand what the teachers union rationale is, but what was the rationale behind the school board in terms of ratifying this? And, you know, where were the parents? I think basically the school board's position was they were – the story they're telling is that they wanted to lock in uh, their costs so that they, you know, had a, uh, a fixed uh, vision going forward of what those costs would be. So they felt that was more manageable. That's that's the story they're telling. Anytime you're the outlier, when most people are trying to uh, manage their long-term risk by doing short to medium-term contracts, that and suddenly you're the only one doing a 10-year contract, very unusual, you should give maybe that some thought. The other thing I would take a look at, and again, I know nothing about the Palatine School Board, although we're going to start looking into it a little bit, um, I'd like to know which of those board members are completely free and independent of a relationship with the local teachers union, because I got a feeling there might be some, uh, maybe an incestuous nature. That's often how these things happen. This local school district gets uh, taken over by board members who are really not advocating on behalf of the taxpayers, but rather on, t- on behalf of the teachers themselves, and they're negotiating with each other. So I think that's worth looking into. But the other thing I think is important to talk about, Tim, is that this, Dan mentioned, where were the parents? Well, most of the time, these contracts are negotiated and settled in private, in secret, where the taxpayers who have to fund them never have any idea or approval rights uh, once the deal is done. No, that's correct. Uh, the only input the taxpayers have is at election time. And uh, the school board, as you had mentioned, uh, is a faction. There's, there was different factions on the board, and the current faction uh, got elected uh, just recently and became the majority. Uh, one of it was an appointment by the regional superintendent to give a former superintendent uh, a position in the district uh, when somebody had passed away, and that gave them the majority at that time. Uh, yeah, and so um, the uh, thinking about this uh, on a go-forward basis, um, the what, what is what is the school district's 
I, I should say, what, was the school district at all? Is it there was concern about maybe there was a school di- a, a, a teacher strike in Prospect Heights uh, last year, and they thought, well, this is a way to ensure we won't have any labor unrest in in District 15. You know, I don't think that was uh, part of this actually, because you have the president uh, or the director of HR is a former president of the teachers union in that district. So I don't think that was going to happen. I don't think that was a concern at all. And what about, you know, the idea is, oh, we can lock in a long-term deal. Maybe it would make sense if you were zeroing out raises long-term. I mean, if you were if you were getting a grand concession from the teachers union to bend the cost curve, that would be one thing, but that's not the case here. No, not at all. Um, You have guaranteed increases. Uh, You also have uh, looks like guaranteed health insurance uh, costs. You know, and and premiums, which is unheard of. I don't think even the federal government can guarantee that. So once again, we have a, going back to a a concept I like to talk about a lot, Dan, is we have a a version of income inequality. You have the teachers now in that community living a better life with better income, better working hours, better uh, schedule throughout the entire year, better benefits, all of it, and locked in and guaranteed for 10 years well, the taxpayers in Palatine have to live every day wondering if they're going to have a job tomorrow. And and you also have agency capture, or in this, you know, board capture, right? It sounds from what, uh, Tim, you're saying that uh, the teachers' union uh, may have been on both sides of the deal to some extent. It, it definitely is suspect. Um, you know, they, in the past, have been very active, uh, obviously, in elections. And and having a former union president uh, as, as your negotiator... <laughs> Uh, is, yeah, is definitely uh, concerning. That's a good place to start the investigation. All right, Tim Millar, former school board president for Palatine District 15, current Palatine Village Councilman uh, Tim. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. All right, thank you.